There has been a lot of talk that Tesla is actually gonna be providing an adapter that you can use your Tesla vehicle on any CCS network. Well, this here was sent to me by Lectron, who has their own version of a CCS to Tesla adapter. So let's open it up and see what's inside. The Electron CCS to Tesla adapter works with the Model S and X with a maximum output of 70 to 80 kilowatts, and with the Model 3 and Y with a maximum output of 50 kilowatts. First off, it comes with an instruction manual that lets you know what comes in this box. The device can support up to 800 volts and a maximum of 200 amps. This box includes the adapter and user manual only. Wow, it's rather big and kind of heavy. If you're planning to store this in your vehicle, be aware it's rated for temperatures between negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has an IP54 weatherproof rating. It states really clearly in the instructions here which order to plug in the device and then plug into your Tesla. Right on the underside of the adapter, there's actually a mini USB port so you can charge this up. You'll probably want to scan the QR code in the user manual or go to the website here in order to make sure that the firmware is the most up to date. You'll need to provide your own mini USB in order to charge it. Make sure it's a data cable as well, so you can use it to upgrade your firmware. All right, I'm gonna charge this up so that we can take it out to a charging station and test it on my Tesla. I'm here at a Joule station, which is a CCS station that goes up to 150 kilowatts. Let's see how this adapter works. Like I mentioned in the unboxing, I charged it up all the way by plugging in, the, in this port down here, and I upgraded the firmware, so we should be good to go. Next step is I want to turn on the adapter. So I press this button here and it will give me this green light to indicate that it's up and good to go. Next step is to take your CCS connector and connect it to the adapter. So now that I've plugged in the CCS connector into the adapter, you just wait 10 seconds and let it talk to each other, make sure it does the handshake, and then plug it right in. So let's see how it works. After plugging in, you'll want to initiate the charging session. My car said it was unable to charge and that the station was not powered. So I tried it on this first Joule station. It didn't work. Let's try the second one. No such luck. Let's try a different one. Unfortunately, this adapter did not work on the Joule station. We have stopped at a charge point station. Let's see if this one will work. See how much we're getting. Now, I'm not sure if this is because I'm at a relatively high state of charge at 71%, or if it's throttled because of the adapter or station. What I do know is that I have more testing to do. It looks like on the first shot, it worked. So even though I'm at a pretty high state of charge, it is pulling 30 kilowatts. I'm pretty happy with that. When it comes to charging, Tesla owners are used to having a boatload of supercharging stations, thousands of destination chargers for a level two compatibility. And to be honest, I do a lot of EV road tripping, so I have a ton of adapters, whether it's for a J1772 or when I'm at a campground and I can tap in. Now, this adapter does a great job of filling an extra gap, which is if you wanna get a faster charge than a level two, you can use this and tap into any CCS DC fast charging station. This would be useful if superchargers are full around the holidays too. I'm glad I'm adding this to my collection of all the different adapters I have. Well, thanks for watching. 
please consider subscribing and sharing this video. I'll catch you all in the next segment. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.